In the previous video, we learned about what causes diabetes and the severe consequences it can have on our bodies. In this video, we'll learn about the risk factors that contribute to developing diabetes and how to manage them. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. Welcome to Bite Size Medicine, your go-to channel for short, easy to understand videos about the common medical topics that matter to you. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, get involved in the comments, and check out the description below for links and resources. Let's get started. A risk factor is something that increases the likelihood of getting a disease. A lot of diseases have them, and they often have multiple risk factors. There are two types of risk factors, modifiable and non-modifiable. Modifiable means you can modify, change, or impact it, whereas non-modifiable cannot be changed. By knowing the factors that lead to a disease, you can learn to manage the modifiable ones to reduce your risk of developing the disease. In this video, we'll cover five modifiable risk factors for type 2 diabetes and some strategies to manage them. A quick note about type 1 diabetes, it does have two risk factors, but they are non-modifiable. The first is your age, and the second is your genetics, or in medicine, what we call family history. Type 2 diabetes has several factors, both modifiable and non-modifiable. The good thing about the modifiable factors is that they are all connected, so managing one will help manage the others. The first risk factor is body mass index. The most important factor the one that causes the highest risk is our BMI, or body mass index. This is a number that takes into account our height and weight. A BMI under 18.5 is considered underweight. Between 18.5 and 25 is considered the normal range. Between 25 and 30 is considered overweight. Over 30 is considered obese. And over 40 is considered severely obese. The point when BMI becomes a risk factor for diabetes is when it's over 30. To help this risk factor be more specific, waist circumference, or how big your waist is, like when you put on a belt, should be measured. If it's over 40 inches in men or 35 inches in women, it's a risk factor. This measurement is included because BMI doesn't recognize if the weight is muscle, fat, or something else like a pregnancy but waist circumference is more directly related to fat, which is the main part of this risk factor. Check out the link below for a BMI calculator. Managing this risk factor requires losing some weight. The CDC recommends losing five to 10% of your total body weight. To figure out what that number is for your body, look at your weight and take off the last number. For example, 200 pounds becomes 20 pounds. That's 10%. 5% is to take half of that number so 10 pounds. Before moving on to the next risk factor, I want to clearly say that this information and these numbers are to help you learn about the various risk factors and how to manage them. It is absolutely not an opportunity to body shame or to tell you to lose weight. On this channel, everyone is welcome, which includes all body shapes and sizes. It's important to love your body and not to change yourself to try and fit some perfect societal image. The goal of this video is to highlight BMI as a known risk factor for diabetes. And if you want to reduce your risk of diabetes, then reducing weight is just one way to do that. The second risk factor is having a sedentary lifestyle. This means not being very physically active, and this can contribute to weight gain, which was our first risk factor. It's recommended to exercise about 30 minutes a day for five days a week. It doesn't have to be vigorous, it can just include walking in a circuit inside your house or around your house or around your block. Basically something that gets your heart pumping a little. The third risk factor is diet. Try to incorporate more fruits, vegetables, and proteins into your diet and more water rather than sugary drinks and processed foods. This can be difficult based on your schedule, access to these foods, cost and other variables in your life, but if possible, then changing your diet can help prevent diabetes. The fourth risk factor is smoking. Smoking causes a lot of problems in our body, so reducing the amount that you smoke will help, not only to reduce the risk of diabetes, but several other health concerns too. 
You don't have to quit all of a sudden. You can start with a smaller goal, such as one less cigarette per day, and then work your way up. Stay tuned for a future video related to smoking. The fifth risk factor is called hypertension. This means having a high blood pressure. I'll be making a video about hypertension because it is a problem by itself, but also a risk factor for diabetes. So for now in this video, to manage your blood pressure, you just need to manage the other risk factors that have been mentioned. Our next bite into diabetes will be to discuss an important number called your A1C and why you should care about it. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, have any questions, have a personal experience in this area that you'd like to share, or have ideas for a future video. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for another delicious bite of medicine.